remind ourselves of our names again. Uh, well, let's just go around in a circle, maybe. So I'm Zach. And I'm Dan Holm. This is Dan. Annie. And Annie. And Lori. And Lori. And Lori is my co-worker here. She's our outreach volunteer uh, extraordinaire. Could you remind us of your okay, name? I'm Vera. And Vera. And I'm Eric. Uh, so I'll be taking a picture. Drew and Drew works with the Division of Natural Areas and Preserves of the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. So we're based in the West District of Ohio. Uh, office is at the Clifton Gorge. And we handle about 12 preserves in various counties. So I have to report to work at the Clifton Gorge. Yeah. Um. And, and the Clifton Gorge <laughs> is directly yes. ecologically connected to Glen Helen. So even, um, anyhow. Uh, so today we're going to work on some invasive species management and removal. Um, an invasive species, you know, is a plant that not only is not native to um, our region or, or this immediate area, and not only is it not native, but it also negatively impacts our ecosystems. So it doesn't just, you know, it's not dandelions that, you know, are in the lawn. Um, at a small mouth or what have you, um, but they can really grow wild and really uh, take control of an ecosystem to the point where it's the only thing growing. Um, so today we're going to talk about garlic mustard. Um, I'm certain that most of you know garlic mustard, but for those that aren't very familiar, it's the it's the only thing that looks like this right now. It's got tiny white flowers. Um, it's got these arrow uh, shaped leaves, pointed shaped leaves. Um, and this is actually the second year growth. This is not the first year growth. It's a uh, plant that takes two years to go to seed. So we're going to look at the second year plants. The first year plants, there are so many that we're not going to be able to deal with. It's also too much bending over and we won't be able to effectively remove the first year plants. Um, but the second year plants are bolting right now. So just like your lettuces in, and other greens in your garden that bolt, um, and they, when they go to seed, they shoot up right. <clears throat> this does it well before all of your lettuces and things in your garden. Um, so we are going to pull this now before it goes to seed. Uh, and we're going to bag it into trash bags, which is not necessarily what we would prefer to do, sending things to the landfill and whatnot. That's not ideal, but it is currently the only solution that we have because not only is it really good at being an invasive plant. One of the reasons why it's good at being an invasive plant is because it is allelopathic. So there are chemical substances within garlic mustard and many other invasive and native species that prevent other plants from growing in the first place. So that assists it in taking over. Uh, as well as it's a prolific seeder. So all of these tiny little um, nubs, I don't need to like stand 30 feet away from y'all. but. Um, these little guys here are the seed pods already starting to form. Now they are not fully formed, so we're catching it ahead of time. Um, but yeah, so this is garlic mustard. If you haven't seen it, I'm talking about it. Um, yeah, the other plant that we can, if, if you're near some, this is Dame's Rocket. This is another non-native invasive species. I'm calling it invasive, but not legally be designated as an invasive species, but you'll, we can see a 
enough of it from right here, I can see it spreading across this area and we've been pulling it actively anyway. Um, and it has variated colors, so it might be more pink or purple or white, but it is tall and is the only other thing that looks like this right now. It's flowering that gets like this. Um, you can see the leaves are like spear point shaped um, and come out in a circular whorl around the stem. So we'll grab these while we're at it. If we're near it, we don't need to focus on this. We're focusing on garlic mustard, but this is just... It has four petals. It has four petals. That's the big Whereas one. Whereas the native one has five, so it can count to five. Yep. Thank you, Dan. No. Yep. Dan has uh, been volunteering with us doing invasive species management for well before I came here. So. The native ones are a lot shorter, but even there. So five petals are good. Got two plants. Four is not so good. Which was which. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. And they will even kind of stay green all winter. I've okay. noticed if, okay. if it's uh, my Dorothy made it great. So with that, um, I, my plan was to start here on the building and work in that direction, and we'll go as long as we can. Um, I my plan was till about noon. We can if people are kick, kicking out before then, that's okay. I'm not holding anybody to it I will be here till noon but I've got a bunch of trash bags I've got wheelbarrows so that we could don't have to like carry the bags all the way around but we'll maybe fill them up as we go or we can work as in pairs to to fill a bag and then I'm happy to just move them back here and I'll put them in my truck um, you just dump it out of the bag and then you reuse the bag so I would love to do that but the actually the, the appropriate thing to do with an invasive species is to actually yeah. and I'm, I'm only gonna single bag this at least for right now but uh, I've like, historically like double bagging it is actually the best thing because we want to ensure that it doesn't escape between when we put it in a dumpster and a landfill. So if the sort of raw vegetation, the, the uh, garlic mustard is really interesting because it can, it's forming seeds now, but it, if we go and say, we just pull it and throw it on the ground inside the trail, which you'll notice if you're hiking around, people have been doing that, which I, appreciate the thought, but this will actually go to seed on its own without it being rooted in the ground. So um, even if you were to, say, cut it, mm -hmm. this portion will still produce seeds and still go to seed. So that's why it's a, that's why we're bagging it and fully removing it <coughs> from the preserve versus... Can you compost it in the it. bag? or will it get So you can compost anything, yeah. um, but I don't have an industrial composting yeah, yeah. facility to guarantee that I'm heating it enough yeah. to, the seeds are viable for like seven to 10 years. So it's a long-term process. Um, so that is why we're trying to get it for those seed. It did get pretty hot. Yeah, so you want a, a appropriate composting situation, which I do not have. So like a burn barrel, like if you built a fire and then put it in, so that you still wouldn't? Burning it, I'm not certain of the effects of burning on garlic mustard, but that I'm sure there have been studies on that. Well, the idea is just that the composter itself, if it gets to a, a good right, I was thinking more in terms of, of just like instead of not just composting, but just killing the seed, killing it within like if you had like a 55 gallon drum that you build a fire in and then just dropped it in, would that or would it be like well, and you so know, you'd want to dry it environments first, where right? it makes it worse? So you'd want to dry it first, which I mean I have like a concrete pad <coughs> behind my workshop which I could spread it out. But this will, the flowers will stay fresh and form seeds while it's laying out on the patio until it gets like totally roasted. Yeah. But I don't know if burning it might facilitate it, produce like germinating for right. all I know. So um, <laughs> I'm also trying not to like do open burns yeah. and, unless we're doing like prairie burn or, or doing like forest management burns, yeah. control burns. But um, yeah, and I would love to compost it personally. I don't have that facility, but I also don't know how, what happens to the allelopathic substances. And if we compost it and all of a sudden we have compost that we still can't use because it's killing whatever we're trying to grow in or compost. So with that, I say we can get rolling. Does that make sense? Do you, are you familiar with the garlic mustard? Oh, I have a bag to show you. <laughs> I, am I assumed so. I assumed so. Well, with that, um, I'm happy to manage the uh, pile of bags and stuff. A reminder, um, if you're going around the building near the open patio at 11 o'clock, we're going to be setting up out there for a wedding. Yep. Just so you know what's happening. And so there. we'll we'll make our way there on this route right now. Okay. So if we want to start on this hillside around the building, we'll kind of swing around till we get to the trail. 
which shouldn't take terribly long, and then we'll just go that way from there. So, and a reminder about next week, we're doing it again. Oh yeah, so we're, we'll be out here again next week. Um, same time, same place, and uh, if you plan to attend, let us know. But and bring a friend. And bring, bring all of them. Yeah, I thought there would be hundreds of people here. We, we, had, we had it in the paper, we had it all over the place, and I think people are going, oh, it's a nice Saturday, maybe I need to do this, <laughs> this, and this. Or they're all at the farmer's market. But. That's exactly what I'm thinking, and you know, that's not a bad you know, <coughs> place to be. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
everyone, my name is Zach Bullheimer. I'm the land manager here at Glen Helen Nature Preserve in Yellow Springs, Ohio. Uh, today we're pulling garlic mustard and uh, the non-native species Dame's Rocket. These are both um, species not native to Ohio that are spreading in our ecosystems across Ohio and in the United States. And they negatively impact our ecosystems by spreading so readily that they actually um, take over uh, a space to the point where the native uh, species can't survive. There are a number of invasive species that we manage here at Glen Helen, um, over a dozen, and today we are focusing specifically on the garlic mustard uh, for the most part. And uh, to, to remove that, all you've got to do is pull it, but know that um, just by leaving it on the ground that the seeds can still be produced by the plant, even though it's disconnected from the ground and everything. So we are currently bagging it. Um, it may be compostable, but you would need a, uh, an industrial composting facility to ensure that the seeds don't still survive um, because it's that good at growing. So uh, with that, we're gonna continue working on our garlic mustard here in the Glen today. Um, but feel free to pay uh, to look at our calendar on our website and on our social media platforms. Um, we also uh, advertise all of our uh, invasive species management events and all of our events in the uh, Yellow Springs News as well.